Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I hope you're all having an amazing day so far and that you're excited for today's video because in today's video I'll be showing you three Valentine's Day DIYs for your rabbit. I'll be showing you how to do two DIY toys and one DIY treat. Now Valentine's Day is only a couple days away so if you're still looking to get something for your rabbit for Valentine's Day this is the most perfect video for you. And if you're watching this video and it's not even close to Valentine's Day that's really cool too. You can adapt any of these DIYs for literally any occasion, even the occasion that you just love your bunny and you want to make something for them. And I would really encourage you guys to be really creative with these DIYs to make them your own and just kind of do your thing. Now if you do make any of these DIYs, I would love to see your creations and I would love to know if your rabbits love these DIYs as much as mine did. So go ahead, if you have Instagram, please tag me in any of your photos. You can also send me pictures over on my Facebook. Or if you don't have any of those, let me know down in the comments if you tried any of these DIYs and what your rabbits thought. Now that's enough talking, let's go ahead and get straight into these DIYs. The first thing I'm going to show you guys how to make is this fleece forage ball for your rabbits. The things you're going to need include some fleece, preferably Valentine's Day themed, and this can be any scraps you have, or just go to your nearest fabric store and get about a third of a yard. And then you're also going to need some scissors, preferably a sharp sewing scissors and just a regular scissors for paper. You're also going to need some natural rope. I'm using natural jute, which I got for $3.49 at Hobby Lobby. You can also use natural Cecil. Just make sure that it's natural so it's bunny safe. Next, I created a pattern here of a circle with a 5 inch diameter, which I will leave linked down in the description. Now that we have all of our supplies, the first thing we're going to do is cut out the pattern with a pair of scissors. Now that we have our pattern, we're going to go ahead and take the fleece and line up where we want to cut the circles out. And then I'm going to take my sharp sewing scissors and start cutting out a bunch of circles. This is what the final circles look like. I ended up cutting 12 circles, four of each different pattern that I had. After I was done cutting, I decided to make stacks of three. And this will make sense as I show you the next step. So I've already completed one and this is what it looks like, but I need to create four little quarter circles. To make one of these little quarter circles, I take a stack, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and I'm gonna take a pencil, which is definitely optional, and I'm gonna mark where I wanna make the hole, which is about half an inch from the corner. And I'm just gonna mark on all four corners. So as you can see, I have a total of four marks. And I'm going to take my scissors, make sure it's nice and sharp, and I'm going to fold and cut where I made these marks just so I can get through all three layers of the fleece. And then we're going to repeat these for each of the four little marks. And this is what it should look like in the end. So really all I did is if you fold it back, you have one hole going through all those layers of fleece. Now we're going to take the jute rope and I'm going to cut off a good section, oh I don't know, maybe like six inches. Then we're going to take it and we're going to thread it through the hole. Now I realize it wasn't the easiest to thread it all the way in so I kind of did this like weave pattern and so that way I could go ahead and cinch it up and tie it. I did cinch it up in a double knot for extra durability and then I cut off the extra leaving probably about half an inch on the ends. And now we're finished with one of the quarter circles and I have to make two more. Once you have all four quarter circles done, it's time to take the natural jute and cut about a foot long piece. Then we're going to take this piece and weave it underneath each of the knots that we created when we made the quarter circles. In the end, we should have all four quarter circles thread onto this longer piece of natural jute. And all you have to do is take this longer piece and create a double knot so that all the quarter circles will be attached. Now after kind of playing with this forage ball, I kind of realized that I wanted it to be more full, so I went back and created one more quarter circle. So if you want your forage ball to be more full, I would definitely recommend cutting out 15 circles in the beginning instead of just 12, which would then make 5 stacks of 3 instead of just 4. As I mentioned in my intro, I really encourage you to just make these DIYs your own. Now that we have these 3 extra circles cut, I will again fold them, mark where I want to cut, make my cuts, take a piece of jute and weave it through and knot it so I have another little quarter circle. 
Then I had to go ahead and untie my knot that I had put in my long piece and weave this fifth little quarter circle onto that big piece. And then I just had to knot it again. Now that I'm for sure done adding quarter pieces, I went ahead and cut the long piece and probably left about half an inch on the ends. Then I just kind of fluffed it out and made it into a ball. Now with this forage ball, you can really stick anything into the little crevices that are formed by the fleece. In this case, I'm just putting some of my rabbit's favorite pellets, but you could also place herbs or small treats inside these crevices. Once I was done adding the pellets to the forage ball, I went ahead and gave this to my rabbits. My rabbits totally loved this fleece forage ball. They had so much fun with it. But you know what else they had fun with? These rabbit treats. They are one of the best recipes I have found for super easy and healthy treats. You will need a blender, rabbit pellets, old fashioned oats, a one quarter cup measure, a banana, a baking sheet, and this is optional, but I will be using this silicone heart rose mold. First, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, take a quarter cup of rabbit pellets and a quarter cup of old fashioned oats and place it into a blender. And don't forget to put the lid back on. Now it's time to put it on the blender and blend it for a couple seconds until it's a nice fine powder. Now that the pellets and the oats are all ground up, it's time to add the banana. I'd recommend adding two thirds to one full banana. I started out with two thirds of a banana. Now it's time to put it back on the blender for one last time to make sure the mixture is fully combined. I noticed that some of the pellets and oats were still stuck on the sides of the blender, so I quickly just mixed it with the spoon and I checked the consistency. I noticed that it was sticking together pretty well, so I didn't add any more banana, but you definitely could add more if you wanted. Since I only added two thirds of a banana, my cookies did end up being a little bit crumbly. If you don't want the treats to be crumbly, I would definitely recommend adding the full banana. Since the mixture is now complete, I could go ahead and add it to my mold. I really like this mold because it has cute little roses and hearts, but you definitely don't need to use a silicone mold. You could just roll it out between two pieces of parchment paper and use cookie cutters to cut it out, or simply make balls and bake it that way. Finally, it's time to bake the treats. We have to bake these treats for 20 minutes at 350 degrees. Once that 20 minutes is over, simply turn off the oven and leave the treats in the oven for an additional 30 minutes with the oven off. Once the 30 minutes is over, we can go ahead and take the treats out of the oven and let them cool. I'm definitely very happy with how these treats turned out. They really look like little roses and little hearts. And then I just store them in an airtight container. And of course I have to give my rabbits some samples as well. Now just like the forage ball, my rabbits definitely love these treats. They just tow down on them and they love them pretty much like every other treat I've ever given them. They like treats. Now this is the last DIY I'm going to show you guys today. It's basically a heart hay feeder boredom breaker. I don't really have a very good name for it, but I did create this DIY all by myself. I'm super proud of it and I think it turned out really cool. You will need a piece of paper, a hole punch, some natural jute or natural sisal, a scissors, a pencil, and some plain cardboard. The first thing you'll have to do is make a heart pattern out of your piece of paper. I did this by simply folding my piece of paper in half and then drawing half a heart in pencil and then cutting it out with the scissors. Next, we will take the cardboard and the heart stencil we just made and cut out two identical hearts out of the cardboard. I did this by simply tracing the heart pattern and then cutting it out with the scissors. You don't necessarily have to use the scissors, you could use an X-Acto knife or a box cutters, which honestly would probably be a little bit easier. Now that we have two identical hearts, it's time to attach them. Make a mark with your pencil about halfway down the heart, and then take your scissors and cut down to this mark. Line up the hearts and make a pencil mark right at the tip of where your line goes. When you separate them, you should be able to see a little dot on your other heart. 
Now you're gonna take your scissors and cut up to this dot. It's very important that the cuts are going in opposite directions on each of the hearts. Then go ahead and line them up and they should slide right together. Go ahead and take the heart back apart as we still need to add the holes. Start by punching holes in one half of one of the hearts about one inch apart. Once you have finished punching out the holes, line the hearts back up and mark with a pencil where you punch the holes. Then go ahead and punch out the holes where you made these marks. At this point, you should have half of each of the hearts punched out. Now you can use these as stencils to mark out the rest of the holes. The main point is to have all these holes line up almost perfectly. Now that all the holes are cut out, we can go ahead and reattach the heart. Finally, it's time to add the natural jute and to weave it through all these holes. I started from the bottom, but you could also easily start from the top of the heart. And rather than cutting one giant piece of jute, I just threaded it through and kept it all on the spool. Depending on how large your heart is, this will definitely take some patience, but it's definitely worth it in the end. You just have to go ahead and thread it through and make sure you knot it off at both ends. And this is what the final product looks like. You also can make this in literally any size. Here I made a tiny little one. It's really just about adapting the pattern in the beginning and you can make any size. Now let's go fill these with some hay. To fill this bigger heart with hay, I took handfuls of Timothy hay and just stuffed it into each quarter underneath the jute rope. Once I had filled each of the quarters, this is what it ended up looking like. Now those are all the DIYs I'm gonna show you guys today. I really hope this spurred up some creativity in creating your own DIYs for your rabbits. And again, if you do create any of these DIYs, please let me know either on Instagram, Facebook, or down in the comments, I'd love to hear. And if you did like this video, make sure you leave us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video. And remember, live life to the fullest.